If you want to have salt and pepper or gray hair and you want to know how to take 20 years off, look a bit more youthful, yeah, I'm going to tell you five of my top tips for doing just that in this video. Okay, <laughs> if I'm honest, I'm a little on the fence on this video topic. There's part of me that fully understands the desire to, well, look as youthful as possible at any age. I fully get it. But then there's the other side of me that thinks that there's something really amazing and extremely important about being confident in yourself at whatever age or whatever look. Like smile lines, those wrinkles, I love them. I think they're endearing. I think they look fantastic on people. I think they tell a story. So I don't know, but I also understand that there's a lot of people out there that do want to look the most youthful that they can for whatever age that they are. So if that is who you are, there's nothing wrong with that. And this video is 100% for you. All right, so I'm gonna jump straight into it. We're gonna dive right into tip number one. And tip number one is simply not having your hair too long, okay? Now, I'm saying short, so let's back up here a little bit so I don't get raked over the coals on this one. But here's the deal. A lot of times I see people equate or marry the idea of long hair to being youthful. And when I'm speaking of long hair, basically I mean anything really beyond the bra strap. As hair gets longer than that, it becomes almost impossible to layer shape into that hair. Shape in hair allows you to accentuate things about your face shape that you want to accentuate. Typically speaking, when we're talking about youth or looking more youthful, we're talking about lifting the face up, lifting the eye up, right? Accentuating cheek structure. I talk about it all the time. So in order to do that, we have to be able to cut shape into the hair and have layers in areas that lighten up, that get a little bit more volume, that create volume in areas that accentuate things about your face. The thing is, layers are dependent on length. So how long your hair is determines how long your layers need to be for them to balance and still make sense and look good. But when your hair is that long, the layers have to be so long to still balance that they actually end up still being heavy hair. And so you're not really getting the shape that you could get. Once you bring the length up a little bit, even though the layers balance with the length, they still are a lot shorter of hair than they were when they were longer. And that difference in length in the layers allows for a lot more movement and shape and ultimately allows us to create a better overall shape for you. It helps us look more youthful. Does that make sense? <laughs> it made sense in my mind, so I hope it makes sense for you. And by the way, can we talk about this? That, my friends, is an eagle's nest. And there are two eagles in that bad boy. You can see one, one's moving right now. How cool is that? Huh. Okay, on to tip number two. I just love that river view. <laughs> That's the fact of the matter. <laughs> anyway, so into tip number two or mistake number two. So I'm going to be using the word tip and mistake interchangeably in this video. You're going to figure that out. These are all kind of mistakes that I see people make and then kind of tips as to how I would address those mistakes. So mistake number two is having your hair too contrived, too stiff, having a style that's just too plastered. Many times that can lend itself to a little bit more of an older look, right? So if you're trying to be more youthful, you want to have a little bit more movement within your style. I get though that more often than not, when I see clients that have a more contrived look that are using more sprays or keeping things stiffer, it's typically because they're trying to create a certain amount of volume in their hair and they're feeling like this is their only option to create that. So I have created other videos, which I'll link one right here to help you understand different techniques so that you can create volume in your hair while at the same time still having movement so it doesn't get too stiff. But just understand that it is important that you have some movement and flow to your hair because that's going to have a tendency to look a lot more youthful. Feel me? Okay. Now, I'm gonna get back to enjoying my river. Wanna go for a swim? <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely not. Don't do that. Oh, 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 and before I forget, during my last tip, I'm gonna take you to one of the, I would say, quintessential places that you must go and visit if you, or when you, come to Portland. It is absolutely on the top of the list. So yeah, you're gonna see that pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Lucky you. Okay, back to the rest of the tips, mistakes, whatever. Okay, so this place is apparently 
chuck full of crazy birds. Saw the two eagles over there. Uh, saw a hawk flying over when I was filming my last segment that you guys didn't even see. But now there's a great blue heron, uh, like right in here somewhere in this area. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, I'm like hoping that it flies away so we can catch it. <laughs> it's cool. Okay, so on to mistake three. So the mis third mistake that I see people making is not layering their hair, keeping it kind of one length. And this really probably should have been mistake two so that I could piggyback it off of the first mistake, which is having your hair too long. But nonetheless, it's mistake number three. So here we are. The problem with not having any sort of layering is again, it gets back into not having the ability to create shape. But the bigger problem is, and I've talked about this in multiple of my other videos, when your hair is at one length, even on shorter hair sometimes, or you know, below the chin and longer, it'll have a tendency to kind of get wider at the bottom, and that tends to bring the eye down. So regardless of the fact that the style will lack any sort of real movement, and it won't have any real overall shape in the hair, it will also create a situation where it brings your eye down, and that has a tendency to make people look more tired and less youthful. So you wanna definitely not steer away from having layers. And while we're here, because I still want that thing to fly away, so I'm gonna give it some time, let's move on to mistake number four. So mistake number four is about being concerned with having a little bit more fun or edge with the cut. So here's the thing, because your hair is gray, unless you colored your hair gray and it's platinum, if it's a natural gray, more often than not, it has a tendency to lean towards a little bit more of the conservative side. So therefore, you can get away with a little bit more of an edgy cut because an edgy cut and the conservative side of the color will have a tendency to balance out a little bit more. And many times you create that edge appeal with the cut and because it's gray, it's a little bit of a dichotomy and it ends up being extremely striking. So to me, I think one of the best things that people can do, even if you're more on the conservative side yourself, giving your style a bit more edge I think you'd be shocked in how striking that can come across and how you actually can wear a little bit more edge than you might think you can wear. Yeah, so try that. Okay, it still hasn't flown away. Maybe soon, <laughs> let's find out. Okay, on to tip number five. Okay, now that is Multnomah Falls. It's like one of the quintessential places that you have to come visit if you come to Oregon. So you can barely even see all of it, but you already saw it from the B-roll I showed you right before this little segment, but it's pretty epic. Unfortunately, I can't really get any closer because, well, it's packed in snow and my dumb butt is wearing sneakers. So there's that, <laughs> but it's pretty amazing, right? Okay, so the last tip is about giving your hair dimension. So we're gonna step into color a little bit. And I totally understand, it doesn't really make sense to be talking about going gray and then talking about color. Like, how does that work? One of the things I do a lot of times in the salon that has worked really well is just do a few of the, I guess you'd say pepper lowlights. You literally put black lowlights in hair. So if you don't know what low lights are there, think of highlights. It's just a darker color than the natural color. That means low light. And it actually gives the hair a lot of dimension. It makes the white pieces pop a little bit more, but more importantly, it gives your face a little bit more richness. The best part about this is when done correctly, you basically only do it once or twice a year. There's no real grow out stage. So realistically, you don't have to go back in and constantly get upkeep. So that part of the equation is kind of gone. In fact, it's actually a scenario where you don't want to do it too often because it can start looking too dark. But it also gives the overall shape more dimension. So the actual haircut is going to have more movement and more flow to it. So really, you're winning on both sides. Yeah. Okay, so I'm in the woods out on this hike. Um, this entire video I've been filming in the woods out on this hike. But realistically, I'm at a school like four minutes from my house. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. The only part of this that was actually shot kind of in the woods was the last part where it was the big waterfall. And that, to be honest, was like literally 
15 steps off of the freeway. I parked my car, walked like a block, and I was there. Yeah, but don't think that I didn't try. I actually drove like an hour and a half or more to get to a place to show you guys on a trail that I wanted to take you on. And we've had so much snow uh, around that I literally could not even park the car. I couldn't even get into the parking lot. And a lot of trails are actually closed because the snow berms are so high that you can't get past them. So yes, uh, I did try. And uh, I did want you to still feel like you were on an adventure. So I lied a little bit, but just a little bit. You forgive me, right? <laughs> okay, well, now I need you to hit on one of these two videos and uh, you're gonna learn something and support the channel. So yeah, we'll see you in the next video.